So you hear about this devious licks TikTok challenge. Mm -hmm. What is going through your mind? <laughs> What's going through my mind is is what's next actually you know you nothing really seems to surprise me but it seems like there's a new challenge every day and then I'm thinking okay so this is the latest thing that's happening and students are getting excited about that and and they know about it obviously before we do so in the back of my mind I'm thinking okay we've got to deal with this but then I'm thinking okay then what's going to be the next challenge that we'll face was it, you know, whenever you hear about these new challenges where students or just teens, young kids in general are encouraged uh, to engage in just negative behavior um, as a mentor, as a leader in a school, is that incredibly discouraging and frustrating for you? Well, it can be uh, because I often have conversations with parents about the influence of other students on, on their child. So uh, many parents are concerned about the friends that their uh, child hangs out with and the kind of influence that, that they're giving. But I've been making the comment to parents lately is that you probably need to be a little more concerned about the influence of their social media life than their immediate friends here on this campus. Because it seems to me more and more that students are being influenced by outside uh, of their normal face-to-face -face friends. They're more influenced by the a desire to get uh, more likes and more followers on their social media account than they are by their actual friends here on campus. During this Devious Licks challenge, during the height of it, was there any sort of vandalism done at Judson? Uh, yes, uh, I think like most schools, middle schools and high schools especially, we had a bit. Uh, it was minor compared to some others. Uh, a few soap dispensers broken, a few things, uh, uh, you know, wads of toilet paper put in the, uh, you know, just put in the toilets or some red dye. I think that was part of it was red dye, a little bit of graffiti, um, some minor things that were uh, stolen. Uh, that was part of the challenge was to seal things. So a few teachers reported minor things uh, that, that were stolen. So we did get it. Uh, uh, obviously could have been a lot worse, but uh, we did have to address it here on campus. You hear about these stories of students across the country somehow managing to steal sinks. That was not even something that crossed my mind when I was in fourth or fifth grade. Right. It's insane. So how is Judson and Longview ISD working to combat this sort of negative behavior? Well, for us here at Judson, um, obviously our first response was to just lock the toilets, uh, only have them open at certain times and have someone standing outside the door monitoring the number of students that go in at a time, leave your backpacks. We started making rules. That's, that's, our, that's the normal response for most schools. When something happens, you, you start coming up with new rules to, uh, to address the behavior. But obviously that's not sustainable as uh, campus administrators. We don't have the staff to sit outside and monitor all of our, all of our bathrooms and and hallways at all times. Um, we had to stop letting students uh, out of class for bathrooms, except for uh, emergencies. We still let them go, but we only had one bathroom they could use during those emergency times. So that was just very frustrating for us and time consuming. So we decided to put this back on to the students because my philosophy is that the majority of students in our school of right at 600 kids really do want to have a safe school they want to go to clean bathrooms and be able to wash their hands in clean sinks with clean toilets. They don't want the doors broken off of the stalls. And so they really do want to, to be safe and have a healthy environment to go to school. So we put it back on those students that really care about the school to help us come up with a way to address it and to have them self-monitor uh, what's going on uh, among their peers. So at this point, how are students holding each other accountable and how do you hope that this at least mitigates or deters students from engaging in this sort of behavior? Okay, so um, one of the things is by, by making this sort of a high profile thing among the students, we started our Judson Jets, uh, Justice League and that is our, our crime fighters unit of our students. So it's volunteer students. Uh, some of them we handpicked because I've been talking about this for some time with some of our students. So 
uh, we started by putting together uh, an advisory panel is essentially what it acts as. So we have our student advisory that keeps us informed on the latest trends and just seeing things from a student perspective. And then we uh, created a uh, Crime Stoppers program. It's our Jets and Justice League uh, Crime Stoppers See Something, Say Something uh, a campaign. And so we put up QR codes throughout the campus that um, uh, students can use to anonymously re report uh, events that are happening or that are anticipated to happen. Uh, that gives me the opportunity to investigate those uh, reports and see if we can um, uh, intervene uh, or apprehend someone in some cases. Uh, but most of all, I think that it has worked well to um, as a deterrent because students now know, they don't know who might be watching a recording or getting their social media post and showing us because if a student comes to me with a, a social media post um, from, as, as we saw on TikTok, from some damage in the bathroom, because that's part of the game is you, you actually video yourself doing the thing. So it's out there. Um, and since we don't monitor it, but the students do, then they know they're being watched. And so I think it's also acting as a deterrent as much as it is uh, a means to apprehend uh, students that are violating our code of conduct. You know, listen, I don't have any children right now. We've got a dog, but my wife and I have no kids. And the world, it seems like, has so much access to a child. Like you were saying, sure. it's no longer your immediate circle that you have to you know, keep an eye out on. It's, it's the world around these students. So my question for you is, you know, what guidance or tips do you have for parents out there about you know, maybe what they can do to make sure that their children are engaged in, a, in appropriate behavior on social media? I know that's seemingly impossible, but there, there have to be some, some tips out there. Sure. Um, there are a few when I have conversations with with parents. Um, first and foremost is have conversations before you even allow your student to have access to social media. Um, this middle school age is a time when a lot of parents are um, are giving their uh, students, their children more and more access to uh, social media. Uh, some start younger, but many start sort of in these in these days. So before you even let them have their first account, um, then you have a conversation with them about it, about what, how to use it and what's the, the proper use, but then also uh, to, to monitor it, monitor, monitor, monitor. And, um, and there are apps that will help you with that. And so, um, you know, we can point uh, parents to some of those apps, but the main thing is just make sure that you monitor. I've had parents come in here very surprised because they do monitor their students' uh, social media, but they're then they're surprised to know that their student has more than one social media account. So they'll have one that they let their parents see, and then they'll open up another one and for their other activities that they don't want their parents to know about. So that's another uh, conversation that is important for parents to have as they monitor. They don't just have a link to that Instagram or that TikTok account, but actually get their phones and look through their phones and look through their uh, their photos and their activities and their friends and uh, talk to them about limiting uh, their their friendships uh, and who they follow and who they like and and the, the posts that they're um, addressing there through their social media. You know, how has social media, and this is my last question for you, but how has social media continue to change that you and your administrators continue to protect the well-being and safety of your students? Okay, so we try, uh, first and foremost, we use social media uh, very extensively here at Jetson. We put out a lot of information because we realize that that has become uh, a norm, not only for students, but for uh, parents and uh, adults in the community alike. So we want uh, the community, we want parents to know what's going on here at our school. Uh, so we, we do uh, a lot of posts on there. So we try to uh, emphasize that that social media is not all bad. And when, pe when parents and people think about TikTok, they automatically just um, think about the bad things that go on with, with TikTok or Snapchat. But those, uh, those media forms and outlets can be used for good as well as for, as for bad things. So 
Um, so for us, we try to encourage our uh, students. Uh, we post a lot of pictures of our students and our activities and show positive things and encourage them to do likewise with their social media and to use it um, you know, as a means to stay connected with their real friends and not just with unknown friends that, um, you know, that are out there somewhere in some other part of the world that they just follow uh, that they really don't know. And so I have a lot of conversations when these issues come up um, with students in my office about how many followers do you have or how many people do you follow and why do you follow them? And, um, and why do you um, want more followers? What do you get out of it? So there's a whole different um, line of conversation that, that we do when we're doing discipline, when we're having conversations with students now that involve their social media usage and their attitudes and their philosophy about what it's for. So that's a, a real challenge to us as an older generation that didn't grow up with that and, and can't really understand how, um, as an example, um, for me, if I see something going on out in the streets, my first response isn't to grab my phone and start videoing it. But for a student, that is, if there's a fight, if there's anything going on, the phone is automatically out with the camera going. That's just the way they, they think, and it's an automatic response. So we have to learn to be wise in, in thinking like students and understanding how they respond and um, and the types of things that they're uh, engaging in through their social media so that we can stay relevant to them as educators.